Hey everybody, welcome back. Ruben with Texas All Water Fishing. Today I want to talk to you about three easy tips that can help you catch more fish. Got a little fish. Ugh. Ah! Another tip to help you a more successful catching fish is fishing the drains. Now I do all these techniques. I use them all year round, high tide or low tide. It really doesn't matter. Sometimes when the tide level is super low and you only have a matter of inches in the drain and you know there's no possible there's no possibility that a nice fish can be there, they can still be around in the foot or the mouth or the front of the drain hanging out waiting to get back in there and catch some and catch a quick meal. take a look at some of the techniques and some of the ways I fish a drain. All right, so right here we are looking at these drains. I zoomed in a lot, so there is not much water right here. But typically when I come in here and I fish a drain, I will start casting prior to me coming into what I call the hot zone. I will cast at the mouth of the drain right here, and again, I will either start by Casting my lure and then working it and bouncing it off the bottom for a flounder. You can even cast your lure and let it hit the bottom and then slowly retrieve it or drag it on the bottom to target flounder. And even reds. Reds will pick a lot of bait up off the bottom as well. But I will cast and target this mouth area first. Just casting and retrieving and fan casting and then I will cast not just to the drain but through the drain to the back of the drain and I will retrieve my lure or bounce it on the bottom cast through the drain and the back to the back of the drain and again bring it all the way through fishing fishing for a predator fish now here is the target area here's here's my hot zone all that right in there so when I come up, again, I will cast and hit this whole area and fan cast all of it. Bring it on bottom, straight retrieving, changing up my cadence, cast through, cast through, cast through, cast through, all the way back to me. Again, changing up my cadence. And as I move in here to get a little closer, I will continue to cast. And continue to fish a lot of times you'll spook the fish and you'll see man he might have been right next to me or he, he might have been right there you get a little boil I will turn around and I will start casting the area again fan casting and hoping that he didn't go too far and sometimes especially a flounder if there's one there's two so even if you scare one you scare flounder the odds are you you'll catch and you'll find that that second flounder out there or even if you catch one a hook up to one and you don't necessarily land it, cast again and cast that area again. And the odds are you'll find another one out there. Sometimes they'll be stacked up. You can, I've gotten very lucky several times where I've caught stacked up flounder just in a real small location. I may pull three or four flounder out of that one spot.
fishing drains is a great tip to use it's a tip that it's a technique and a zo hot zone for me no matter what time the season is no matter if it's high or low tide it doesn't matter drains are a key point for me when I am using Google Maps and trying to map out an area that I want to go fish I make sure there's a lot of drains and I make sure that there's a lot of intersections and that brings us to our third tip, fishing the intersections. Again, it's the same kind of concept as fishing a drain. A lot of predator fish will hang out here and wait for that bait fish to come moving in and out of the area. It also ties in to fishing those water depths because a lot of times at the intersection, when you have fast moving water, say if there's a storm or a flood, it will dig out and cut out little canals and little channels underneath to give you that subtle water drop so in those intersections a lot of times though you will find that the water is just a little deeper just deep enough for you to have success and fish a drop got that red right on the edge of that right on the edge of that that oyster oh he was, nope, it's a speck. Spec? Yep, it's a nice one. Oh, he's barely hooked. <laughs> okay, so this is where two bodies of water are going to meet. And this is what I mean by fishing an intersection. So when I come up to the intersection, again, I will start casting and retrieving, casting, and retrieving all along here. Also, the points. A point is also a hot spot. A lot of times, if the water is, if the water is flowing in one particular way, flounders love that water movement. So you can find a flounder here. You can find a flounder here. Either they're going to be in that water movement, or they're going to be just on the other side. So fishing the points is always a hot spot of these intersections. So I will cast and cover this shoreline, cast and cover this shoreline. Make sure I get that hot spot on both sides of that point. I will cast and cover this shoreline, cast and cover this shoreline. And everything in the middle, fan casting, fan casting, fan casting, fan casting. Everything in the middle. I will probably throw anywhere from 8 to 12 cast. Sometimes I'll even drain, drop my anchor, and I'll just work this area entirely, trying to find where is that deep cut. Is it on this side, or is it on this side? Is there a deep drop on this side, or is it on this side? And I will target this whole area for a little while. I mean, maybe about 12, maybe 15 on the high end if you're seeing a lot of bait activity, or you're seeing a lot of, um, or if you're seeing a lot of predator fish pounce on some bait you know that's you might want to spend a little longer a little longer there but if i'm blind casting and i don't see a lot well then i'll spend anywhere from 8 to 12 cast uh, uh definitely working the intersection this is just an entire hot zone and you just cannot go wrong and cannot pass up when two bodies of water meet you have to spend a little time working and trying to cast that area well i hope these three tips help you catching and being more successful landing some of those big fish out there like i said these are techniques tips hot zone areas that i target throughout the year doesn't matter if it's summer or winter or anything in between high tide or low tide a sunny day or a rainy day for me when i am looking and searching for areas to fish these are high areas high probable areas that before I even launch my kayak and I map out the route that I want to take, I always make sure that I have a few of these in mind, a few of these hot zones in mind when I am targeting some of these fish. But thanks, thanks for watching. Don't forget, like, comment, and share. Don't forget to subscribe. Hopefully next time you catch me hooking up and I hope that these tips help you hook up as well. Thanks.